All right, and we're live here. Thanks everybody for joining the OpenJS Foundation Cross Project Council. Today is July 30th, and it is uh, noon here in New York. And uh, as a reminder to folks, we are alternating on Tuesdays uh, between 1600 UTC, which is the current time, and next week will be 1800 UTC. Uh, so welcome. Thanks, everybody. Uh, the meeting uh, issue, the agenda issue is uh, 272. Before we get to um, the agenda or the project boards, does anybody have any announcements or anything they want to touch on before we get going? Sure, you were out last week, so I expect you've got twice as much to share. <laughs> I was just thinking, um, I don't think I have anything this week. I'm, I'm sorry to let you down, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. All right, great. So um, with that, uh, well, one thing we talked about before going live is perhaps jumping into the project progression board um, and touching on that before we get into the agenda items. Does, does anybody um, have any objection to, to that? No? I will drop the uh, link here in the chat to the project project progression board, uh, project onboarding. Um, the Chris uh, Borchers or, or uh, Joy Burson, do you have anything you want to uh, set this up with? So I think Chris um, was able to introduce this work uh, last week, and I think the um, thing that I was hoping to just get um, the, the feedback on and input on was whether the, um, the, the, the template and the process was um, making sense and was meeting folks' expectations. So at this point, we have two projects that have started uh, to go through this um, board, and that's Mocha and Architect, thanks to um, Chris Hiller and Chris Borchers for, um, for dog fooding for us. That was, I think, a very delightful, um, you know, kickstart. Thank you both. Um, but the the question is, and I think I think we're working with it. The question is, is it meeting the needs of um, our federal CPC members and um, voting members in terms of uh, what data they were hoping to see captured and that kind of thing before we get into the blo the the issues that we've discovered are blocking. Uh, from what I saw, um, it looks like you've, you've got things covered in these two projects that you've uh, started working with, I'm trying to find the ticket that has, uh, does, so does each one have in their uh, description a uh, checklist? That's right. So um, they, uh, if, you, if you go to create a new issue now, you can create a issue from the onboarding template. And so there's an on there's an issue for Mocha and a separate issue for Architect. I would like to go ahead and make um, the issues for our other projects, but I didn't want to do that um, unless we were pretty sure that the template was what we were looking for and that the information we were capturing was what we were looking for. Okay, great. Um, I, I make, go ahead, Chris. Sorry, I was just going to say, um, yeah, I haven't heard any any feedback from any other folks on the CPC as to whether or not they think anything is missing from the templates. Um, I know just from working through it, um, it seems to be capturing everything I would expect to see from a project. Um, so at least from my Point of view, I haven't found anything missing yet. Um, there are some blocking items that we can touch on, in a minute, but yeah, I didn't know if anyone else had feedback on the on the templates as they currently stand or not. Okay. I'm thinking it's going to be a bit 
it's going to be a bit difficult for the other CPC members unless they like sit down to do something equivalent to a review. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we can do one of two, you know, my first thought would be one of two things. One, we just sort of base it on, you know, the, the, the CPC members who are actually going through this to say, yeah, like Chris just has, it looks like it's covering everything. Or if we want to really be sure we should almost, you know, say, okay, if it's filled in, to the extent that we're going to fill it in, have the rest of the CPC members take a look at it as if it was a new application and say, you know, okay, is that is that everything we would need? I definitely would love to get that feedback before we make a new applicant, you know, um, deal with it, right? Like, I, I feel like it would be unfair to a brand new project to, to have to deal with us saying, oh, well, this isn't quite what we were looking for. Let's go spitball for a while on it. That that seems like it might be really frustrating to a new project. And I would love for us to to make sure that, um, you know, our it, it all makes sense for us before we do that. So I'd, I'd almost suggest a, like the, hey, CPC members, these are now completed as if, you know, it was a new applicant. Let's go through and and maybe even schedule some time in this meeting or some other meeting to go through and discuss. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, Mateo and I and, and anyone else from the node side of things should go through this and set aside maybe an hour or something to really kind of go through it. I even wonder too about some sort of pull request that we could be commenting on, like a pull request with a checklist or any um, any other expectations of this sort of progression. Uh, might be a good place to, to to land comments. The other the other thing though is I wonder if it might be before any other projects really or or, or CPC reps from projects really start digging into this. Um, it might be worth waiting until we get the known blockers resolved because those are just going to get in the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. That fits where I was thinking in terms of, like I didn't, I wasn't thinking this was ready for us to look at or review or, so getting it to a state where we think, hey, yeah, this is now complete. That's the right time to ask for that review. Yeah, so why don't I, yeah, let me pull that, um, the current architect onboarding up so I can see and I can just kind of remind us where the blockers are and see if there's any updates, which are, they're probably all going to fall to Brian and there probably aren't updates because I imagine he would have told us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, well, I guess um, actually one of them is not necessarily on <coughs> Brian or the board or legal, um, specifically for architect conversations with them. Uh, currently, they use uh a code of conduct um that is not uh, it's it's some code of conduct that they wrote um they are perfectly willing to move to the open js foundation code of conduct um but only once we've worked through the actual um enforcement processes and things that we've been working on. Um, they would like to see that in place before they change their code of conduct. Um, okay, should we, should we capture that? Um, in the so we do, somehow? I'm sorry? I was just wondering if we should capture that in the board here so that we know that that's a potential blocker. Uh, yeah, so, well, does it make sense to capture that? Because I think, well, maybe it's not in the board because we do have an issue, right? That we're already, or the, yeah. there an issue or pull request, I can't remember. We have an issue um, that Manila, I think has been championing about the escalation path and COC. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and we do have a pull request open for that. Sorry to, to jump in, Joy, and I know you weren't here last week, and well, it's something that we're going to talk about on the agenda today. Um, I'm not sure if Manila's uh, is on. 
Yeah, because so, is there is there concern that um, they don't know what to to write in, or is there a concern that if it's you know we don't have the what happens you know when the email, like today I think it is we have an email, um, and if something was sent to that email, we'd have to scramble to figure out what to do, and that's the part we're trying to fix, right? Right, and that's and that's the part. They would like us to figure out before. Right. They, they would want to know that if something happened, there wouldn't have to be a scramble to figure out how to deal with it. And what would they do today? I believe, so I, I, I actually haven't gone and looked through that code of conduct, but I believe they've already put things in place on their end. I, I, I guess, like, my first thought is actually not too much of that should change because we're not... We're not asking that any escalation processes within the project change. It's only that if somebody follows those and wants to escalate outside the project, there's an option to do that through what we've defined. Okay, that makes sense. And then, yeah, maybe that's maybe they didn't understand that. Because um, we don't we don't want like every escalation to just bypass the project. Right, it's, right. It's the like you know, Node has its moderation policies. It has all sorts of things, but if if you go through that and you get to the point where it's like, no, I just don't, I just can't agree with what they've done. You've got the, the sort of last one where it goes to the foundation. And we've said there's going to be this uh, COPC or whatever, which is like in theory, a, a group of, of people from across the project to make, you know, as a place you can, you can further escalate to. Yep. No, that makes sense. I, I think, why don't I, this may not necessarily be blocking now that we're talking through it, but, um, and the issue may just be, we've been trying to discuss this in Slack rather than just actually having a conversation. So why don't I take it? Also be that our actually, documentation. actually chatting with them. Okay. Um, and then, yeah. And then we can go from there because they may be able to just move then. It may also be that we need to update our docs a bit as well. So if there's, sure. I mean, we're planning to do that anyway to clarify something. <laughs> if they thought we were saying we want to replace their escalation, maybe we have some doc updates to make as well to make that clear. Yep, yep, that's a good point. Okay, I will, I'll take the action to go talk that through with them and then report back. Um, let's see, what else was actually blocking? Uh, Charter template, Brian, any movement on that? I forget where we landed last week. I know we talked about. Yeah, yeah. sorry, I can get myself off mute. Um, you no, know, I don't have any movement on that. Um, it's with me to draft it. Um, I just haven't had the bandwidth to do it. Sure. So okay. my apologies for that. Um, and then also any word back from the member companies, uh, legal folks on the uh, IP policy and trademark policy? So um, we haven't, I think the path forward on that actually is to send it to the board first for feedback, which um, should come out here shortly. I should be able to get that out shortly. And then after that, once we've gotten feedback from there, then uh, member company legal takes a look at it. And then at that point, assuming there are no major changes, um, then we publish that oh okay i maybe i all right maybe i misunderstood i thought Hi. that had gone out that had already gone through the board before i joined and was already out to member companies but maybe i nope no that's <clears throat> it that came through right about the same time that you joined the board oh okay yeah no worries all right so yeah so we're still blocked on that because we don't have a um so yeah I guess, Brian, um, so what the, the item in the checklist is actually update legal copyright notice on the website and GitHub. So really, I guess if we want to link back to the actual policy, that's where we're blocked. But if it's just a matter of we need a specific line to put on the site and the in the repos it says like copyright open JS foundation and other contributors or something like that. Yeah. Um, does that, is that all tied together or? 
then we get like um, a copyright <clears throat> without having to go through all that run around. So I, it probably makes sense to do everything all at once would be my guess. Um, so we're only making these changes one time and we don't end up with anything that's, that's partially done. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's, that would be my recommendation would be, let's just do it once. Okay. Yeah, all right. Can we just make sure then um, in addition to the actual policy being approved, we uh, approve some sort of statement that'll go on websites and GitHub. Yep. Definitely. I'm taking a note here. And this will be all part of the charter template that you'll work on, Brian? Oh, no. Uh, sorry. No, this is, uh, this was the next item after charter template. Got it. Okay. So this is just, there's an <laughs> item in the checklist that's, that says specifically update legal copyright notice on the project website and GitHub. Um, okay. So are we, uh, so then if I understand what you guys were just discussing, Brian, you're suggesting doing this all at once. Will you, should we expect like all of these kind of things to, to come through and uh, yeah, that's part of template and, and, and this sort of guidance? Yeah, that that's what I would, I think that's probably the best way to do it. I mean, when these things are, are done piecemeal, then things end up in a partial state and maybe they get completed, maybe they don't. So it's easier probably just to do it in one fell swoop. Okay, would it make sense to create an issue uh, that would, would capture all of these things that we would expect and link and we can link to these varying other issues or I'm just wondering how we how we track this all together. I think we already have I think this is already covered through a few issues, right? Um, yeah, that's my concern. It's, uh, I've, there's 258 here on the license and copyright statements. There's yeah. 207, which is the project charters. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like there's another one, but I'm not sure. So we should probably, at a minimum, we should probably get those into that onboarding board. Yeah, I would say anything we feel is related to blocking these things we should move into the board just so that we're tracking it. Mm -hmm. All right, great. That's, that sounds fair. Um, and when are you leaving again, Brian? Um, I'm uh, going to be out of the office kind of mid this week, next few days. Maybe out for a little while. Do you know if, is there any chance of kicking off that the copyright and trademark stuff before you leave? Since I imagine it's going to be a multi week process to get. Yep, that's that. That is my plan. Actually, that's one of the things I've got to get out the door here before. Uh, awesome. Before I take off. And is that, that you are going on vacation, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know how that goes. <laughs> yes, well. <laughs> that's why I specifically asked before he left because I don't want to be bothering him while he's on vacation. <laughs> Um, would we consider the update move JSF CLA bots uh, to be a blocker on project onboarding? I don't consider it a blocker, but because CLA, I, DCO. I, well, I feel like the bot itself is a second. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, so basically, okay. I, I think I can give an update on this one as well. Um, I mean, as to whether it should be a blocker, I don't know that it should necessarily be a blocker. Um, there's guidance as part of all this stuff that we're looking at, um, uh, looking at very specific guidance on what to do about CLAs. And uh, at a very high level, the current draft says um, every, every project should use DCO, regardless of whether you're using a CLA or not, uh, since they're not, it's not an either or situation. So, um, it's really, it's a best practice to be using signed off bylines and, and that sort of thing. Um, as for the CLA, uh, we do have revised CLA text, which is part of what's being reviewed right now. And um, as well as a, a revised CLA tool that should, um, should, sorry, I can't take the cord out. Um, so we should also uh, have as part of this shortly a tool which can handle, uh, well, which would replace CLA bot. So these are all things that are in flight. I mean, it's I, I'm giving you kind of an immature update right now, but.
but I wouldn't maybe let these things be a blocker at this point. Um, one of the pieces of guidance that is coming out on CLAs as well is that you know, projects can continue to use them if they choose to, but um, you know, that's, that's ultimately up to the project. If they want to use the project, then we'll help them do it. If they want to use the CLA, then we'll help them do it. But if they want to just use DCO, then that's, that's okay as well. Yeah, so I will say that I know um, Architect would prefer to keep using the CLA. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, whenever that stuff's ready, we can be one of yeah. the, the guinea pigs of transitioning. Sounds good. Yeah, and that, that's a conversation, I guess, to have with uh, each individual project. So on a different right. topic. The one thing I noticed in the template there is the contacts. Um, and and I guess this is where it gets into maybe the challenge of public issues versus not. But like, I, my first thought is we want more than GitHub handles. Because that's that, that may be like a mismatch between, you know, if the foundation's trying to notify people, you know, having the opening an issue in GitHub or, and then, making a comment like even though maybe like even actually opening something in public in github isn't feasible either right so do we want yeah, to make so that a little bit clearer in terms of like we need emails or whatever it is yeah we could probably that's a good point we could probably improve the template um at the same time um as we're working through that issue on how we're going to properly track that information in a private way mm -hmm. um, my goal there was at least get the github handles of the people that will be the people and then once we have no no it's great yeah there. it's great to get the people's names or identifiers yeah. it's just that was my first thought is we likely need a little bit closer link or more direct communication channel yep yeah i, um, I would second that strongly yeah. um whether we I mean, I, I, we can certainly maintain an offline list somewhere of what GitHub handles match up to email addresses if somebody's not comfortable, you know, making their email address public. But either way, I mean, having a way to contact people directly in absence of direct messaging, <laughs> which doesn't exist on GitHub, yeah, that'd be really helpful. Like if, you know, um, one thought would be is basically, you know, the checklist is to add the identified contacts to <laughs> mailing lists that are specific to that project for these things mm -hmm. so that you know we have a public email which is like infrastructure at architect and then the people's emails are hidden behind that right or mm -hmm. um all right sorry i have to jump to my next meeting there was one other i think those were the main blockers on the project onboarding um related to that the one other thing i wanted to update on really quick is um, uh, so pull request 248 I'll drop the link um, the board uh, discussed it has no objections to what's there so that should be ready to move to stage three and I commented as such in that pull request awesome thank you yep. right yeah. so effect so effectively we can just land this right I believe that is the case we have lots of approvals. It's been open 27 days, so. Yep. Cool. All right. I, I do have to jump to my next meeting. Sorry. But uh, Great. Yeah. Thank you for feel free to reach out if, if anything else comes up on like the project onboarding or anything, and I can follow up later. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Thanks, Thank you, everybody. Chris. All right. Great. Chris, um, I don't. Yeah, I'll have to look at that. I, I made a note to uh, to look into that. Um, I don't want to over over operationalize this, but I wonder if we should have like emails for project dash legal, like architect dash marketing, or what have you, uh, uh, at, at the foundation level um, to to be able to handle policies like this in the template. Can I share my concern? Just um... Uh, which is that I, I, I'm a little, based on my experience with the JS Foundation, 
for the tech, it's very difficult to keep the information fresh and updated in all the places, right? And so there's a balance between that I want to find a, um, you know, the, the right spot for between making it really easy for a project to update that contact um, and people to find that that right person, but also respect. Um, the privacy of different um, information, like you know their their uh, email address or phone number or whatever it is that we might might want, and if we if we end up putting that in like too many places, it becomes uh, harder to maintain that over time. And I just want to put that out there. <laughs> totally right. right. That's where like a mailing list where that never changes. So like everywhere it's documented in terms of contacting them is that one thing that shouldn't change. And then it just would be like add or remove from the mailing lists. It sounds like if we had a project specific, one project specific mailing list for each project under the OpenJS foundation, that would solve most of the issues with these contacts. Then the, whoever's on that mailing list, that information would be effectively private and could be updated by the process on that list themselves. Yeah, that's, you know, that, that's definitely doable. Um, it's really convenient from my end um, because I can easily add people to mailing lists. I can easily add mailing lists themselves. Plus, um, we can have people subscribe or unsubscribe as need be. Um, you know, I can assign moderator privileges to people as well. If there's somebody from the project who wants to be in charge of keeping the mailing list up to date, I mean, that that's that would work really well. All right. I, mean, I think that would be a good way to go. Um, I mean, all right. potentially, uh, potentially something like, main, like project name dash maintainers. So it is clear that that's the that that's the maintainer contact, or uh, you know, not not for regular project business. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder if we should have a private repo to to maintain some of the member lists. I'm not sure. I don't want to again over operationalize things. Well, if we did it that way, then I would think we could add a public file on our CPC repo that says. This is the list of that these are the named main and from like a GDPR's mm -hmm. perspective, we're fine um, as long as we're not also including um, contact information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. All right. Well, um, we're a little bit uh, half past here. Do we want to move on from the project onboarding board and get back to the agenda? That's uh, fine with me. Thanks so much for letting us um, go down this sidetrack for a bit, Joe. Yeah, of course. I, I think it's really important. Um, and maybe at a certain point, we should set aside specific time for it. Um, uh, but we'll, we'll see as we go. So getting back to the agenda, the uh, first item on the list here is uh, issue 260, which is the create page with links to Slack channels and such. I know that we had some progress there, and uh, there were some comments about uh, some updates, um, and, and uh, particularly when people join the Slack channel, how do we interpret the other important channels? I see that Brian and Chris went back and forth a little bit on GreetBot. Uh, mm -hmm. Brian, do you want to add any more here? And yeah, um, I think uh, if anybody has any more changes or, or wants changes to the collaboration page, um, drop me a line, let me know. As far as using something like GreetBot, uh, I haven't seen any objections to it, so I can go ahead and get that set up if everybody's, everybody's okay with that. That would be great. I think it's a really good idea. Uh, anything on the calendar I see uh, uh, mentioned here as well? Um, I guess I'm not sure what the question is. Uh, I'm trying to look at what how it, how it looks on the, uh, on the, on the site. Chris had asked about uh, the, the calendar being hard to. Oh, yeah, um, that that should be that should be fixed now. That's all. Okay, great. In place. Great. So, do is this? Uh, we think we can close this issue and um, 
Uh, any, anything further can be an issue. Yeah. Seems All right. No reasonable. objections. All right. I am thanking Brian on the issue and closing up. Sounds good. Great. All right. Next on the agenda here <clears throat> is the uh, EL, EL, ELI five. Uh, project charters, which I just found out ELI-5 is explain it like I'm a five-year-old. I was wondering what that meant. <laughs> uh, is this is this with you as well, Brian, in terms of um, project charter templates? Uh, is that kind of what this issue technically is now? I guess so. Yes, I think it is. <laughs> I can, uh, I'll, I'll say that I think our, our conversation earlier, um, because this is an issue that's on the board, uh, I think I think we can move on from this one um, because we need to just provide a, a template. Okay, and is that is that providing a template, is that an issue captured or should we leave this open for that and just put a comment in and, and, and leave it? Um, I can update the, I think I commented on this issue last time, but I, I'm happy to update it and just say, hey, we're going to work yeah, yeah maybe right, I've got a comp it is Go assigned ahead. to Brian. Maybe we just need to take the label off the agenda. Um, I don't mind, you know, checking in with Brian uh, each week if this is something that is, um, you know, something that's important in terms of the project question stuff. So I just had a comment, Brian will draft the charter template and we'll just move on. Sounds good. And Jory has offered to help on that as well. Great. Uh, I'll drop this in here now. Um, so next on the list here is review meeting time. So this should be closed, right? We're, we're good with uh, where we're at here. Any objections to closing this issue? Nope. All right. Closed. Um, update move JSF CLA bot for new foundation issue number 124. I know we kind of touched on this uh, briefly. Um, do we leave this open uh, for the time being until we figure out uh, CLA, DCO guidance, and then how we move forward with the CLA bot? essentially a comment that Brian made uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, I think we can probably probably remove the tag on this one. Yeah. Oops. Um, all right, we'll do. All right, uh, next on the list here is to go through the uh, uh, post bootstrap housekeeping board, which I will drop a link in there to the chat. So we got lots of stuff in the done column. Um, I will, uh, we can start by going through the in progress column here. We have uh, about 20 minutes left in the meeting. Uh, the, the, the first one here is a uh, new process for CPC reps to share responsibility for travel fund. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, Jonah has a uh, pull request uh, open for. And um, trying to get that open here. Jonah, do you want to give a, 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 any sort of context or update on this? Yeah, hi. Um, yep, yeah, this um, uh, seems to be going well. There hasn't been any activity on this pull request for uh, the last about three days. Um, there was a request for changes from Mateo, and um, I made the changes there. So, Mateo, I think you're on the call. If those changes are, are good for you, um, you could uh, maybe update your current status on the PR. If there's additional changes, then you can... Um, you know, like comment in there, and then we'll we'll address those. Should be. Let me check. Cool. And then I didn't see. I didn't see the notification. Oh yeah, I, it was an improved word. I, I didn't see. I didn't see the email notification. Yeah. Yeah. Let me I, just I, check I, I figured. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. Um, it's only been three days, anyways. So, um, yeah. And so, um, if there isn't any 
further comment? I mean, it's definitely been identified that there's things we need to define, you know, going forward um, in this process, but I'm trying to get, you know, the basic form of it to stage zero before working out the specific details and like changes to how the fund itself is managed. Um, so I guess uh, it's waiting for, if there's nothing further, um, no further requested changes, which I guess we'll see in the next day or so, um, then I guess what we need is uh, approval. So, yeah, great. I, I, mm -hmm. uh, I just I want to just remind everyone this is stage zero, um, but also encourage everyone to to take a look uh, and, and and go through it so we can uh, get the stage zero landed and um, you know start to talk to our our projects about uh, what we're looking to do here. I have LGT, LGTM date, by the way. Oh, cool. Thanks. Great. So, excellent. Uh, yeah. Does that, do we, is there a formal procedure for how many, like, uh, approvals are required to the next stage? Just in general, uh, if you look at the governance doc, it does say, like, for a general PR. I think we did talk about like we could change, we could have something specific for um, proposals, but I don't think we do. So that would be the guidance that applies. I think it's like at least two and having been open for a certain amount of time. Okay. Yeah, I just dropped a, a link in the chat to that specific section of governance. Uh, there are no outstanding objections. There are two approvals by CPC members and the PR has been open for at least 72 hours. Okay. So, um... I guess uh, if everyone on the call could could review it, maybe um, find uh, find yourself uh, approving it or find something you want to change about it, then that'll be great, and we'll probably revisit next week. Sounds yeah, good. I guess. and thanks for. I was going to say thanks for for pushing it forward, John. Oh, uh, no problem. My pleasure. Yeah, the one the one thing that's a little interesting is like this potentially changes governance related stuff, which has other. Um, requirements. However, since it's stage zero, it's not really changing them yet, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. By the end, in order to get this, this, um, the final stage, yeah. um, it's going to require board approval. And we also definitely won't want to merge it unless uh, all the people involved, like have explicitly stated that, that, right. you know, they're, they're approving it. Yeah. Yeah, that's just where I think the suggestion was like, we could probably clarify for stage zero, one, two, three what the requirements are because it 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 wouldn't be totally obvious so mm -hmm. but but yeah i think for now just assuming it's what's in that doc makes total sense mm -hmm. great all right um great so uh unless anyone has anything else to add we can move on from that issue uh the next one in progress is the update uh move jsf cla bot i'm does anyone object to moving that to the column that is waiting for board slash foundation. Uh, the last comment on that is that, uh, you know, we're going to get some provided uh, uh, direction on that, on, on CLA, DCO stuff specifically. Sounds Fine. good. No objections? Great. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, the next one is add entry point for projects wanting to join on reading and review project progression. Uh, I'm trying to open up the full issue on this here. Uh, so Michael opened this. Um, Michael Dawson, I uh, feel like we talked about this last week, but I can't remember where we landed and, and what, what's going on here. Sorry, which one was this again? Just remind me. It's... Uh, issue 261, uh, add entry point for projects wanting to join on Readme and review project progression. Uh, it's assigned to Jory. I assume this is kind of. This is me. This will all be... um, yeah, and um, so I have some some copy that I want to push to the README, um, and we wanted to include it as part of PR one sixty five. But there's some bug um, in GitHub that is not letting me, despite being um, an admin on the repo and Miles having his. Uh, having the check box clicked that he can allow edits from maintainers. I'm not able to push for some reason. I'm getting a permissions there. It's that same one you had. 
um, with mine, Joe. Um, and I've reached out to GitHub support to figure out like what's going on. Uh, we still haven't gotten a response. So I actually just poked them, um, uh, poked, poked my help ticket to see if I can. Can we just okay. open a new PR? I can, yeah, I guess I can open a PR against that PR um, or just land 165 and then, and then I'll fix it. I mean, that's fine too, but it just also seems like there's just something not working quite right. I just meant replace mm -hmm. 165, but whatever. Yeah, just, just making some suggestions. Get a whole new PR. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to add a comment in the interim that, uh, Jory, that you have some copy to add to the VP and that we, we have this pull request open. Um, so, uh, however, we can move forward. Uh, We'll figure that out. All right, great. So I, I think we, we kind of have that one covered. But, uh, I'm going to move on to the next one, which is issue 160, the document define initial process for handling reports to report at openjsf.org. This one is something that Manil was moving forward, and <clears throat> he has a pull request open. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we talked about this a little bit last week. I'll drop them in the chat. Um, I think that the expectation is this will be moved to the uh, stage proposal around code of conduct handling, which I don't believe has been moved yet. Um, and then uh, Emily has uh, a few comments on here as well that it looks like uh, Manuel has not uh, had the opportunity to look at yet. So I, I think uh, I would encourage folks to take a look at what we have here and um, I'll try to pin the mail about moving it to the correct place and we'll try to uh, move this one forward for next week. Does anyone have anything else they want to add here? Okay. Let's take a quick note. Okay. Um, so that's all the stuff that is in all the items in the in progress column here. Moving to the to do column, we have issue number 263, opened by Miles two weeks ago. Um, this is improved governance for regular members. Opening up the full issue. Uh, Michael Dawson's got a couple of comments. Uh, so, so the description is we likely want to draft better governance for onboarding and offboarding regular members. Um, how long does this PR need to be open? What GitHub works? Teams need to be added to? What mailing lists do they need to be added to? How can someone object publicly or privately? I think we also talked about um, like notifying the project leads uh, if they're representing a project per se. Um, does anybody have anything they want to add to this conversation? I'm willing to take it, but I won't work. I'm away on vacation next week, so I won't work on it for a few weeks. Yeah, I can make a note to try and look at it as well. Um, But okay, so I mean, essentially, we just want some clarity on on um, uh, the governance around regular members. So yeah, it's sort of like governance slash instructions for a reminder of all the things we should do when we add somebody or remove them. Like, yeah, here's here's how we approve that, and then like, how do we, you know, what mailing list, what places do we need to update because they've been added? Makes sense. Onboarding and offboarding. All right, cool. Um, next here is add projects to start updating, oh, ask projects to start updating references to docs and CPC repo, like COC, et cetera. Um, do we think that this is post uh, project progression uh, progress? Uh, or is this something we need to be considering sooner than that? I think my understanding is it's, yeah, we, sh we wait till we get through the, the initial ones that are being onboarded. Mm -hmm. 
uh, review foundation infrastructure and we think how we manage it. I think we keep uh, touching on this and saying we'll, we'll address that uh, at a later date. No objections, moving on. Uh, the last one in the to-do column is add admin policy docs. Um, this was opened by uh, Ben uh, a long time ago, maybe even bootstrap days. Uh, let's see. So the description is there are a number of admin focused policy docs that we recently decided not to facilitate via their own admin repo uh, since we only have one top level council. There's still a few admin policy docs that will need to live in the cross project council repo, such as transferring a repo to the OpenJS org, GitHub org management policy, member expectations policy, and working group requirements. Um, it seems like maybe some of this could be worked out with the project progression work as well. Yeah, I don't know. I think these are, we probably have examples in the Node.js org that we can just copy and update. It's just a matter of somebody mm -hmm. doing them. Okay. Um, okay, great. So we'll, we'll leave this open and um, uh, see if we can make some progress on some of these. Uh, if you have any more, uh, if you have a moment, Michael, to, to drop some links in or some something uh, specific that you're Right. Yeah. Okay. I'll try and think. Of, yeah, because there's there's an equivalent of most of those over on the node side. So, yeah, I'll try and add it to my yeah. to do list to dig them up and add them in there. Again, might not be till a couple of weeks, but yeah. Or, or yeah, if, if, if you have a few minutes, we can talk about it real quickly, and I can try to do it sure. as well. Yep. Yeah. Um, if you want to just grab me, and I can point you at that, to them. That would work too. Okay. Capturing that. All right. Um, great. So that gets through all of our to-do stuff uh, in this uh, post week trap housekeeping board. Um, a couple of things that are waiting uh, for the foundation. Uh, one that I don't think we talked about is the project-directed funding. Um, I don't know, Brian, uh, if you can give any uh, update on this because Chris has uh, dropped off. If this has been talked about further, or um, it, we should just kind of move on. It has, yeah. So we we had a three hour board session yesterday um, discussing strategy and and a variety of other things related to um, the overall direction of the foundation. And this was one of the topics that did come up. Um, there are a substantial number of open questions still on this. Um, so, you know, the, the update again is that there is uh, progress being made on this and it's under active discussion. It's just that there's really, is, it's not to a point where there's anything to report. Okay. Um, one question that it could be good to have is some status update on Node Plus JS Interactive. So the, um, the notification for CFP acceptance should be going out, I think, tomorrow. I believe July 31st oh, is the okay. plan. Yeah. And then um, okay. everybody who gets an acceptance, please confirm quickly because they would like to uh, announce the schedule next week. So really, you know, they, they send out the acceptance for the CFP and then um, wait for everybody to confirm they actually do intend to uh, attend and present. And then at that point, once they have a schedule constructed, then it goes out. So the sooner we know, the sooner we can send it. Okay, yeah. perfect. And um, related to sponsors and uh, tickets sold and so on, is there some numbers that you can share maybe even privately? Um, at this point, the I'm aware of three sponsors that have gone completely through the process. Um, and uh, give me a moment, I'll pull that up. Um, but we do have others that are, um, their conversations are ongoing with, you know, with members of the foundation and for others. Um, I don't know if there's anything specific that I can share there. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. All right. Great. Um, 
So I think, let me, and I may just added a quick comment on that project directed funding uh, issue. Uh, Brian, just saying that it's under active discussion at the board level. <coughs> this will kind of have a, at least, uh, an, awareness, an awareness of where that's at. Um, so that, I think, kind of does it. And we only have two minutes left. Uh, so congratulations, everyone, for coming in right under the wire. Does anybody have anything they want to uh, add or say or, or uh, yeah, anything before we wrap up? Uh, for anyone who's interested, the standards group is having a meeting in one hour from now. Excellent. Yeah, thanks for, for bringing that up, Emily. And that should be on the calendar if anybody wants to get uh, 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 you know involved there. Um, it should be, but I don't think it actually is. If you go to the standards repo, then you'll find the issue there. Oh, I see something on my oh. calendar. Yeah, I see it. Open JS Foundation standards team meeting. Then never mind. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, if Hey, Emily, if, if anything needs to be changed on that, if you need um, more details put in the invite or anything like that, just drop me a line. Oh, sure. It's, I'm not running. I'm just there. It's just, it, it's been challenging so much for us to actually gather enough to have them. So, yeah, I figured I'd take that Yep. No problem. Um, the other thing, too, uh, one of the things that uh, worked well for this particular meeting is that I added people directly to the invite um, so they don't have to go look at the calendar. If you'd like me to do that for the standards team, I can do that as well. Whatever is taking work away from me for anything, including my own calendar maintenance, I'm happy to have done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds good. Yeah, just drop me a line. All right, great. So um, I think that does it. Uh, thanks everyone. Great meeting, lots of work being done. Um, if you see anywhere you can dive in, uh, please do go through pull request issues. And um, yeah, thanks everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks all. Bye. Bye. Bye bye.